Although there's always this excitement when scientists discover that organisms sometimes use alternative spellings for different amino acids and they're like oh it's not universal well spoiler alert there's actually a different genetic code being used inside almost all of your cells in your body and so your mitochondria the powerhouses of your cells are where you do your atp making and the proteins that are needed to carry out that atp making some of those are actually made in the mitochondria by the mitochondria's own ribosomes. So these are called mitoribosomes or mitochondrial ribosomes. They use mostly the same code as your cytosolic ribosomes and other ribosomes, but they actually use some modifications. For example, the cytosolic ribosomes, so your main ribosomes and the ribosomes we typically think about when you think about like ribosomes and translation, they actually use the codon UGA as a stop codon, but in mitochondria, that UGA is actually read as, hey, put it in a tryptophan. And AUA, normally isoleucine, is now methionine. AGA and AGG, instead of being arginine, now these are stop codons. So the mitochondria genetic code is a little different. And the mitochondrial ribosomes are a little different. And so these mitochondrial ribosomes have a lot in common with the bacterial ribosomes because the mitochondria come from a really, really old ancestor cell, like swallowing a bacteria. This similarity to the bacterial ribosomes at its heart makes these mitochondrial ribosomes vulnerable to some of the antibiotics that we use to target bacteria. A common example of this is the aminoglycosides, things like gentamicin and streptomycin. These can bind to mitochondrial ribosomes and influence the translation, especially in people who have certain mutations that make their mitochondrial ribosomes more similar to the bacterial ones. And this can actually cause antibiotic associated deafness. Another class of antibiotics that targets mitochondrial ribosomes accidentally are the oxazolidinone, so things like linezolid as well as Lorenfenicol. This is actually what I worked on in my postdoc at UCSF in Dr. Janitza Fujimori's lab in collaboration with Tushar Raskar at the James Fraser lab. What we did was we saw the structure of the mitochondrial ribosome's large subunit bound to the antibiotic linezolid. The structure helped to see how this antibiotic fits into the mitochondrial ribosome's peptidyl transfer center, or PTC, and along with the ribosome profiling data that I collected that showed that these ribosomes are actually getting halted by these antibiotics at specific sequences, all this information combined will hopefully help scientists to create antibiotics that better target the bacterial ribosomes without binding to and harming the mitochondrial ribosomes. So you get less toxicity, less off-target activity, but you're still able to generate those potent antibiotics that we're desperately needing in this age of rising antimicrobial resistance.